The communists have attacked the research center of the Central Kerbin Alliance network, and they have also put the first artificial satellite in orbit around Kerbin. This is Echo 3, and let's continue discussing the Cold War. We need to respond in a big way. Since we can't put the first satellite in orbit, we're going to put the first Kerbal in orbit. Our program is taking a huge risk. We haven't even put a satellite in orbit at all yet, and we're going to try putting a Kerbal in orbit. This is a high-risk scenario. Some Kerbals may not come back alive. However, that is a risk I am willing to take. Since we've already launched sounding rockets into space near Kerbin, there isn't much more science left for us to gain. However, since we have upgraded our astronaut complex, Jebediah will be able to go out on extravehicular activity and collect EVA reports around every biome that he flies over. Although our program doesn't have access to much technology, the swivel engine and the reaction wheels in the command pod should be enough that Jebediah will be able to control this rocket. With a good ascent profile, it'll take about 3400 meters per second of delta V to get this rocket into orbit. However, it'd be nice if Jebediah is able to return with some science. So we should budget in some extra so Jebediah will be able to return. The lower stages of this rocket are using solid rocket motors that do not have the ability to gimbal, so we're adding some aerodynamic control fins to help with steering through the lower atmosphere. As is, this rocket has plenty of thrust to weight ratio in both the lower and the upper stages. It has so much that I'm actually adding just a little bit of extra fuel in the upper stage and adding a few control fins to help with stability on ascent. This humble rocket should be sufficient to blast Jebediah into orbit and into the history books. Seeing our little freedom capsule orbit high over the communist heads should come as quite a surprise to them. For added measure, we'll add this Kerbal Engineer piece so that we'll have access to all the flight data. And we have liftoff of Freedom 1. The solid rocket stage powers this rocket through the lower atmosphere. We have separation and the liquid stage is now firing this rocket the rest of the way. We are heating up quite a bit as we accelerate to 2300 meters per second. That's orbital velocity. With a little bit of time before his orbital insertion burn, Jebediah takes a moment to conduct an EVA report over the oceans of Kerbin. In order to place maneuver nodes, we need to upgrade mission control and the tracking station. Since we haven't done that yet, we'll just have to make all of these maneuvers by eye. Fortunately, Jebediah is a very skilled pilot and able to make all of these maneuvers by feel. Now that the craft is in orbit, Jebediah takes a moment to conduct an EVA report over every biome that he orbits over. The views in orbit are stunning, but Jebediah has lots of science to conduct on this mission. This is a critical science gathering mission, so Jebediah has little time to enjoy the views. Hopefully, he and other Kerbals will be able to return to space very soon. And before this decade is over, we will put Kerbal boots on the Mun. We choose to do these things not because they are easy, but because they are hard. It's about time for this mission to come to a close. Jebediah is nearing the point for his re-entry burn. The goal will be to land the capsule on friendly territory near the space center. Jebediah will need to be very careful with his re-entry burn as there are still some communist forces lingering near our space center. Looks like the heating protection is doing its job and the capsule slows down sufficiently. The parachute is able to deploy. Now we just need to get down to 800 meters where it will fully inflate and Jebediah should come down to a very soft landing. Look at that, he even conducts a little bit of science on the way down. He is quite the hero, isn't he? Truly a national treasure. Jebediah has brought home a wealth of scientific data for our engineers to pour over. Unfortunately, Jebediah also said that he saw some communist forces still very close to our facility. We will need to go out and destroy them. It appears that the Cold War is really heating up. So far, our program hasn't really focused on developing any kind of military technologies. We do have this one jet, though. Perhaps we can throw on some armaments on it and be able to fight back and chase off these communists. We can add a couple hard points to the bottom of this jet, and then, since we need to fight off some ground vehicles, these rocket pods will probably be just the thing. Let's double check our center of mass and our lift and make sure everything's still lined up okay. It is. Let's throw on our defense contractor pilot and Jebediah, and then we will send this thing out to face the enemy. Everything checks out on the runway. We'll make sure and add some 
action groups to be able to fire these rockets more easily. From my experience with the BD Armory mod, it does make things a lot easier if you assign action groups to things like switching weapons and firing rockets. Jebediah saw a couple enemy vehicles when he landed, and he and Didi are approaching them now. These rockets should do quite a number on them. It looks like Didi has pretty good aim. That's one target down. They're going to swing around and see if they can't get that second one. Wow, that's some nice flying and some nice shooting there, Didi. Let's go home. That's all the enemies that Jeb saw when he landed his capsule. However, that might not be all of them. Now Jeb and Dee Dee need to take this in for a smooth landing and that will wrap up this mission. The added mass of the rocket pods has definitely affected this plane's performance. Perhaps we'll need to look at making a dedicated plane for attack missions in the future. And there we have it. The Central Kerbin Alliance Network has just performed its first combat sortie. Let's see what's going on over at Mission Control. Reports indicate that there are still at least a half dozen more enemy vehicles in the vicinity. So we're going to make a dedicated attack aircraft that is able to travel 220 meters per second in level flight and fly above 5,000 meters. The Kerbals over at the R&D have been busy developing new fighter jet components. Our pilots will be sure to enjoy these enclosed cockpits. These new enlarged fuel tanks should greatly increase our range. The new Weasley engine should greatly increase the plane's performance and fuel efficiency, and better air intake should mean a higher top-end speed. The improvements to the hangar and the runway mean that we can build larger and more complicated aircraft. This is definitely a bit larger aircraft, so it's going to need a larger tail rudder. Also, since it's bigger, it's going to need more wing surface area in order to generate enough lift. I'd like to tell you that the swept wings help the plane's performance, however with the stock aerodynamic model that I'm currently using, it will not. For a better aerodynamic model, you could try using the mod Ferrum Aerospace Research. In general, I find that the planes that I design with that mod actually perform better, although other people struggle to use it. For this aircraft, careful attention needs to be paid to the center of mass and the center of aerodynamic pressure. The rear landing gear need to be just behind the center of mass. This will let the plane be stable on the runway and yet be able to rotate during takeoff. Since this is to be a nimble fighting aircraft, we're going to want the center of aerodynamic pressure to be a little bit lower and just a little bit behind the center of mass. Also, since this is to be a fighting aircraft, we're going to need to put some weapons on it. The rocket pods worked very well for attacking the ground targets, so we'll add some more of those. Using the rotate tool in absolute mode, the rocket pods can be ensured to be pointing perfectly straight Didi's such a good shot, he probably doesn't need four pods worth of rockets. However, we'll make sure he has plenty for this mission. It's time to set up the controls for this fighter. The engine is able to reverse thrust, so we'll set up a control for that. Then we'll set up some controls for the weapons manager so that we can select the weapons and fire the rockets. The plane is almost complete. We do need to add some ailerons on these wings. I'm struggling to place this just a little bit since I already angled the wing. Usually I like to do that when the wing pieces are straight. Then we will copy this and place a second one down on the wing, and this will act more like a flap to increase our plane's lift. And this looks like a fighter aircraft. We'll just make a few fine adjustments on these control surfaces, and then we'll send Didi out to take out those communist vehicles. The center of mass and center of aerodynamic pressure look good. Let's send this thing out. This is a combination test flight and combat sortie. So the first thing Didi is going to do is meet the testing parameters of flying higher than 5,000 meters and faster than 220 meters per second. Based off of the way the plane is handling now, those requirements will be easy to meet. This plane should be able to fly far higher and faster than what the initial parameters required. The airspeed contract requires the plane to be flying level under 5,000 meters for 10 seconds. So Didi is going to level out the plane here at this altitude once those requirements are met, he will take the plane over and start engaging the enemy. And he just blew past the maximum speed requirement. So DD now needs to keep an eye out for these communist trucks. It's going to take an eagle-eyed Kerbal to be able to find these little trucks at this speed and altitude. The veteran DD has just spotted a pair of them. He's circling back to make his pass. And he launches his first rocket, and that is a hit. 
That's one communist truck down, five more to go. He's circling around, trying to make another pass on the second truck. Couple shots, and he has got this second one down. Now just four more enemy trucks to take out. Didi's piloting and gunnery skills are unmatched. With pilots like Didi in our new K-86 fighter jet, the Reds will think twice before they attack again. He's coming up on another vehicle, he fires off a salvo and direct hit. Now he's swinging around to get a shot on that fourth vehicle. He lines up and boom, another one shot, one kill. Just two more enemy vehicles remain in the vicinity of our runway. Hopefully, our achievements, like this new fighter aircraft and our launching the first Kerbal into space, will show the communists that we are not to be trifled with. And Didi scores another direct hit. There is just one more vehicle left to take out. He banks over, lines up his shot, and lets off a full salvo and takes out that last vehicle. Our new K-86 in the hands of a skilled pilot like Didi is certainly a formidable match for the communists. Now he just needs to bring it home for a landing for a complete mission success. Perhaps the only thing left to improve on this aircraft is some better landing gear. Freedom won this round, but tomorrow's another day. I am Echo 3, and thanks for joining me to discuss the Cold War.